Well, hello and welcome once again to another edition of the OSA Supplier Insights. I'm Mike Jackson. I have the pleasure of serving as Executive Director of Strategy and Research at OESA. And today I'm joined by Jim Ward, Partner and Senior Industrials Analyst at RSM. Jim, great to see you. Great to see you, Mike, and uh, good to be back. Absolutely. So thrilled to uh, have the opportunity to discuss our first quarter 2022 OESA Supplier Barometer. Uh, a pretty remarkable time in the industry for sure. And uh, with this uh, edition, we're focused on production, planning, and electrification. And so uh, clearly a, a kind of a trifecta in terms of topics to cover, especially within such a dynamic time frame. Um, so with that, let's just jump right in. I want to share uh, a slide here that just talks about the, the top level. And uh, we know that uh, certainly it's been a dynamic but uh, I, I guess the point here is that um, we actually improved rather dramatically. Uh, as much as there's been a lot of volatility, volatility from the fourth quarter of last year, we actually rose uh, 18 points in terms of the supplier barometer index. So up 18 points to 52. Now, as much as that movement, the direction is very positive, it really only stands two points above that neutral level of 50. And so while we're moving in, in the right direction, uh, clearly many uh, challenges persist. And so uh, can you share a little bit, uh, are you seeing some of that from your side, from your clients uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, clearly a, a number of pressures and, and they persist? Yeah, absolutely, Mike. Um, we're seeing, I think it's this aspect of, you know, it's now a couple of years of, of uh, instability, but at the same time, getting through 2021 and managing through so much of that uh, instability, certainly with the, uh, the chip crisis and that. And I think this aspect of, from an industry standpoint of, of hey, we've, we've gotten through a lot of this. Um, we still recognize the fact that we have challenges ahead of us, but there's been a lot of, a lot of strategy, a lot of coming together, a lot of planning for, um, maybe a greater preparation, if you will, for the challenges that are head, ahead. So I think that that is driving some of that optimism of, of being able to get through it. Well, and I think that's a great point. I, look, I, I think as well, if we see that, uh, you know, clearly in the fourth quarter, there would have been kind of a reset in terms of expectations. And so we knew there was a lot of pressure. Ultimately, uh, at that point in time, you know, the industry recognized that We'd be in this uh, for you know, kind of at lower levels for longer, and so that was a recast, a reset for for the industry outlook at that point. And so I think you know, ultimately looking at then, you know, looking ahead, you know, there's expectation that the outlook for the industry as a whole is expected to be a bit stronger here in, in the 2022 timeframe. Yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, kind of transition to to one more slide here and and look at the the top industry threats, and this is. Not a, a, a big surprise here. Um, this is something that we've uh, continued to, to track and monitor, but you know, what are those, you know, the top industry threats? And, and number one still continues to be production shutdowns due to supply chain shortages and issues. Um, but I will say that, uh, you know, coupled or followed very closely by uh, labor availability and then inability to fill customer volumes due to shortages. So the, the one bright spot I would say here, Jim, is that if you look at, uh, each of these three, they, the, the severity of these threats has eased slightly. Yeah. And, and so that I think is, uh, is somewhat of a, uh, a silver lining. It doesn't mean it's still, uh, it, that it, we're out of the woods. We're, we're, we're certainly you know, facing a, a, a number of pressures still. Um, any, any thoughts on, on this point as we, you know, we're, we're you know, kind of in the so first quarter 2022, knowing yeah. that the industry here going forward is uh, kind of looking forward to uh, uh, trying to, to regain some momentum. So it's, it's certainly consistent with what we're seeing. So the production shutdowns uh, at, at the top of the list here, um, that, is, that is of continued concern and, and the ability to, to pivot pivot and react to those issues, uh, not a surprise. Uh, on the labor front, it's, it's also uh, interesting to see, I think from a geography standpoint, you know, certain, certain of our clients I know uh, have some real struggles here. Others at the same time have, have had uh, a little bit more balance uh, in that particular area. Um, you know, it's certainly on the heels of Omicron, it's, it's uh, 
you know, seeing seeing COVID-19 and that showing up uh, a little uh, further down there, not surprising either. But these are all, I think, the issues that are that that all of our clients are 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 definitely continuing to deal with. But as as this shows, it it also shows some some positive nature um, uh, coming out of it. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. The idea that um, you know, obviously, the supply industry has been incredibly resilient in terms of managing and has become very adept at, at navigating uh, some of these, you know, these uh, uh, you know, pain points. And, and yet one point I wanna emphasize here and just come back to is, can you speak a little bit to, you know, the, obviously interest rates, we know that's gonna be a factor uh, and, and certainly you know, within your organization, I'm sure this is a, a, a topic of, of you know, that's been, discussed uh, you know quite a bit and, and certainly many of your members probably very your, your clients very interested in, in kind of getting a better read there but you know it has some pretty significant implications as well looking at uh, a pretty substantial change in fed policy yeah absolutely from uh, I think it's the aspect of whether it's you know directly impacting or indirectly impacting uh, by way of the consumer at, at, at the uh, at the end level as to what that is actually going to mean, what the uh, the speed of transition, if you will, from an in interest rate uh, and monetary policy standpoint will be and how that will, will trickle down to the suppliers themselves and again, uh, reacting to, uh, preparing obviously as well, but reacting to the, the realities of that and, you know, right getting to, uh, you know, the, the borrowing rate on, on new vehicles and keeping those production production levels uh, trending in, in that positive direction on into the future. So for sure. Absolutely. Well, uh, and at the same time, we know that, you know, clearly across the board, a whole host of input costs, much higher for suppliers. And, and all of a sudden then, you know, to have interest rates, you know, higher as well on top of that, it, it simply just you know, ramps up, you know, uh, another pressure point. Um, right. I want to come back to another point then here as well. Um, this survey certainly taken here in you know, July, uh, into February timeframe. And so uh, clearly a, a whole host of, of um, events has, have transpired since then. And we have uh, here, uh, you know, toward the bottom, we have external black swan event. And we know that there was, uh, there were heightened tensions uh, between Russia and Ukraine here, uh, Russia uh, threatening, uh, uh, you know, here in, in this buildup in terms of a, a military presence and, and now certainly an invasion of, of Ukraine. That had not yet been reflected, reflected or captured here within the, the first quarter uh, OESA supplier barometer. But it was, you know, certainly it, it was gaining, obviously, as, as evidenced here, it was gaining uh, attention and, uh, and certainly focus in terms of uh, another threat, another element of risk. Um, thoughts there? Yeah, the, I think that that risk or some other risk um, has been has been, uh, I think, on the minds of those in the industry. And I also think with, you know, not getting into all the details of, of the challenges right now, but I think the one thing I, I think about is the fact that, you know, the industry has, you know, unfortunately, with what it's gone through over the past uh, couple of years here, has learned a lot, I think, in, in managing and, and reacting and sustaining uh, those strategies going into these these challenges. So not to, to sugarcoat it or make it uh, sound as if it's going to be any easier, uh, but I do still feel positive uh, about how the industry itself will react to the uh, uh, these types of black swan events. That's a great point. Great point. Let, let's move ahead. So here, uh, you know, we talked about uh, in terms of on a production basis. You know, one of the key pieces that's been so difficult here over the past two years is that we had. You know what was initially you know pre-COVID. You know we had a, a much stronger uh, outlook, of course, and and so as a result of you know of the pandemic, and then followed by uh, a tremendous uh, you know level of of pressure due to semiconductor shortages, and and then a whole sweeping uh, range of of supply chain constraints. We we know that production was actually below break even for two years in a row, and so the the bright spot here in 2022 is that that's actually uh, production will, will outpace uh, break even by a, a pretty significant margin. So we're, we're quite positive on this front. Uh, and then even thereafter, I mean, what do you think that says? I mean, clearly, you know, a couple of years in a row, a much, much stronger outlook here thereafter. Yeah, it is. It's very promising. 
Uh, certainly the, on the demand side, there's no question as to the demand that's there and that it, that it uh, will support that. Uh, certainly on the production side, it, it will have the challenges that are there. I think what is interesting, certainly getting through uh, even 2022 here is there, there are aspects of some of the suppliers that are out there, uh, perhaps not the tier one suppliers, but tier two, tier three, that, that these levels are, are still challenging uh, without a doubt in, in navigating through, through 2022 and, and getting into that 2023 period. But overall, uh, it, it is looking positive uh, for sure. I, I completely agree. And, and yet at the same time, that's not to say that you know, it's, a, it's a slam dunk, right? But we know that it's, it's not a, um, a, a done deal. Uh, clearly, we've already seen a, a wide range of, um, of production you know, stoppages and outages where, where facilities have been idled as a result of uh, continued uh, constraints relative to uh, semiconductor. Uh, and, and thereafter, uh, even a wider range of, of supplies here uh, as a result of the, the Russian invasion in, in Ukraine. And so, you know, clearly there are some headwinds there that represent the, you know, that, that impact the global industry. Um, here closer to home, certainly um, we have seen a number of facilities, so a lot, you know, some, some pretty uh, significant impacts here relative to um, production here in the first and second quarters as a result of constraints, you know, that the continue to persist. I want to thank um, our longtime partner, uh, RSM, and, and certainly uh, my guest today, Jim Ward, partner and senior industrials analyst with RSM, for uh, helping us uh, review the uh, first quarter, uh, 2022 OESA supplier barometer here uh, on the topic of uh, production, uh, planning, and uh, electrification. And so, Jim, thanks so much for your insights. Mike, thank you. It was uh, a pleasure speaking with you today. All right. All the best. Take care.